you all know that in the study of Hagenson et al., he wondered whether it was a precursor to invasive carcinoma. And his meticulous follow-up follow of his cases, he realized, yes, it is a precursor to lobular carcinoma because it has a long time of development of invasive carcinoma, although it takes 25 years. There are about 17% of cases which do develop into an invasive carcinoma. So the, though the frequency is low, the lag time is long, it is a precursor to invasive carcinoma. It was Fred Stewart and Frank Foote, that's them here in this photograph, who first recorded that this was a very distinctive and specific entity. And they brought this out in their seminal article that this is a proliferation around the terminal duct globular units. They are completely monomorphic. They grow in a linear growth fashion and sometimes in a targetoid fashion, which, is, which they in their article called a circumferential fashion. They also recognized that there was something peculiar about the spread and termed it pagetoid. And finally, concluded in their study that these lesions are malignant and that they do warrant a mastectomy. Foote and Stewart's exact definitions of in infiltrating lobular carcinoma was thread-like strands of tumor cells, which we today recognize as Indian file, loosely dispersed throughout a fibrous stroma. A sheet-like growth is distinctly uncharacteristic. Please re remark this. They go more in cords. A greater cellularity in the primary tumor is unusual, very different from a ductal carcinoma. And though these things can be broken, these rules, which are thin strands and uh, do not show a sheet like arrangement, these uh, sort of typical morphologies can be broken at times. We need to keep a few more things in mind. So that was the introduction. And we now move on to the entire spectrum of lobular lesions. We have the atypical lobular hyperplasia, followed by the lobular carcinomas in C2, and finally, the invasive lobular carcinomas. This spectrum, as you must have read, not only includes ALH, but there are various types of lobular carcinoma in C2. The classical, solid, pleomorphic, with necrosis, signet ring. We'll be covering these quickly so that we know how to recognize them and how not to mistake them. And finally, we'll move on to invasive lobular carcinoma and its variants. One thing before we set forth, when we use the term lobular neoplasia, we only include atypical lobular hyperplasia and lobular carcinoma in C2. It does not include invasive lobular carcinoma. So the term of lobular neoplasia is specific to these two entities. Once again, a little bit about the clinical backgrounds. It's very important because your, your index of suspicion has to be high. They're often clinically occult. There are no specific gross findings. ALH and LCIS both are bilateral, multicentric, often associated next to sclerosing adenosis, which makes our job difficult because very often they are missed in the radial scar-like lesion. Mammographically, they are silent. They only have microcalcifications. So it's a problem for the radiologists, and it often can come only with an innocuous-looking microcalcification. The moment they see a microcalcification, it is a definite indication for a biopsy of that breast. And as I said, Sometimes it can be just an incidental finding, along with the unifibroadenoma. Now, what's the significance? Why should we recognize all this in so much detail? Well, they are identified in as many as 1.3 to 6% of breast biopsies. They are more common in the premenopausal age group, that is in the 44 to 48 years of age. The postmenopausal age group, in fact, has a lesser risk, and it is only approximately 10%. Now, what is the difference in the significance of ALH and LCIS? 
This is an important issue. ALH has a four to five fold increase, while LCIS has almost a double and eight to nine fold increase. That means that if you recognize only LCIS on a biopsy, you are saying that that individual has a 15% absolute risk of developing a breast cancer, although it may have a long lag period as much as 15 to 25 years.